Next question is from Kim Clothcorn. What are the benefits and disadvantages of different types of pull-ups, such as traditional pull-ups, chin-ups, wide grip, etc.? Is one style superior? Yeah, so just because exercises have the same name, like front squat, back squat, right? Split yeah. stance squat. Just because they're all considered kind of in that category of pull-up, wide grip, close grip, supinated grip, pronated grip, whatever, doesn't make them the same exercise at all. Now, they're similar, but really think of them as different exercises. It's a different recruitment pattern. The muscles will be used differently. You're going to use the lats more in one version ver versus another, the teres major or minor more versus one other, biceps more mm -hmm. one way uh, versus the other. Um, it's just different recruitment patterns, different exercises. And yes, they're similar because you're doing that pull-up motion and you're working the muscles a similar way, but they are all very different. So they all have value. Um, now, here's what I tell people with pull-ups is do the ones you have the best mobility for the most and then slowly practice the ones you have bad mobility with and get good at them. And typically what that looks like is, for the average client, is some kind of a uh, maybe shoulder width grip, pronated or supinated grip, depending on the person. Some people are better pronated, other people supinated. Start there, and then you can start to play with the wider grips. The wider grips require more stability and more mobility. And for some people, it takes a long time to be able to get to the point where you could do a wide grip pull up and then not kind of hurt your your shoulders or your body. Well, my response to clients is to to do the one that you do the least. If you never do neutral grip or you never do supinated grip, that's the one. That one ha has the greatest potential for change for you. If you do a overhand traditional grip all the time when you do pull ups, that has the least amount of potential for change. So if you're looking for change in your body, which is most people, most people are training to change their aesthetics one way or another. If you're looking for the greatest change, then the thing that you do the least or never do is going to provide that, that stimulus, because your body's not used to it. So it has the greatest potential for change if you do the same stuff all the time. Now, if your goal is to get really good at pull-ups and you have a competition with a friend on how many you can do, then sticking to one style is what will is, is yeah. what's in your best interest. Yeah. Some some are great for if you're trying to really uh you know target a specific muscle group and get more lat activation or get you know hit the biceps a little bit more like you know more of like a narrow grip and you know supinated grip something like that. I want to focus a little bit more on my biceps. I'll I'll tend to lean more in that direction. But yeah, to Adam's point, I do tend to want to work on things that I'm not as uh, efficient at because then you know my body will have to really work again, which then promotes, uh, you know, a whole nother cascade of benefits towards my other lifts. Yeah. For, I guess we can argue that a kind of a shoulder width grip is probably going to work the lats more through a full range of motion because you get more of a stretch at the top. Mm -hmm. It's more of a direct pull uh, on the body. But, you know, I've done wide grip and really felt it uh, in my lats. Um, from a functional standpoint, this is where people start to, this is where I have fun with the argument. It's like, okay, <laughs> which pull up is best for functional strength. Well, I would imagine, I would guess that it's probably some kind of a pronated grip pull up because I'm if I'm pulling myself up on a ledge, yeah. my hands are probably facing in that way. I can't think of yeah, a way where I would can't scoop your hands behind something like if it's just a random object. You usually have to like put your fingers over the top. Yeah. Now most people are stronger with a supinated grip where the palms are facing back and that's just cuz there's a little bit more bicep. Mm -hmm. But I for a while I pr I practiced pronated and to the point now where I'm actually stronger pronated. So if I if I do a pull, if I'm doing any weighted, pronated or neutral grip, I can lift more oh, than I can. Neutral grip is my favorite. I, I love that the most. But again, that's that's feeding my own itch. Like it's it's one of those things too. If I like having everything in tight too, I, I press and, and and try and get like that spiral line with my overhead press. Mm -hmm. And it's just one of those things that kind of it's another addition to that that complements it well. Well, that's going to be the most advantageous for your shoulders, right? Your right. shoulders are in the most optimal position in a, in a close kind of neutral grip. Yeah. yeah, you go wide and stuff like that. You're a little more compromised. So it's back to Sal's original point, mm -hmm. which is, you know, if I'm talking to a client that is limited because of their shoulders or something like that, a wide pull up is probably yeah, more dangerous. your way there. Yeah, it's more dangerous than a neutral or a supinated type of grip. I think your your shoulders are yeah. in, a, in a much more favorable position. And, and here's here's a little side note: uh, pull ups with for low reps are phenomenal. I love if, for sure. I mean, add weight around your weight. Really good super, at them. Super super underrated exercise that a lot of people don't do. Oh yeah, get five reps. Put some weight around your waist. Do five reps for for pull up. Watch what happens to your back. A lot of people just don't even think about that. They think, oh, it's body weight, so I'll just keep doing reps. Try low rep oh, pull, -up, pull ups. Super demanding.